Frank Jackson, Mayor of the City of Cleveland. If you work for the City of Cleveland with Mayor Frank Jackson, you don't have a whole lot of free time, okay, because he really, he really um, pushes to get things done. Well, uh, the responsibility of the mayor is to, is to run the city. Uh, everyone works for the mayor except for city council and the court system. All your policemen, the firemen, emergency medical, waste collection, uh, building and housing, all, the, all that works for the mayor. And so the mayor's job is to execute things. You can set policies, set agendas, but you have to execute the purpose of the city, which is uh, provide city services. The mayor asked me after he won election as mayor in November of 2005. I wouldn't have a chief of staff who wasn't loyal to me or a chief of staff who I couldn't depend on. Once in a while, like when the mayor's outside the country and we're not able to reach him in time and we need to make a decision, I will make a decision. I'll usually consult with some of the other members of the mayor's staff and then I'll report the decision to the mayor as quickly as possible, but that's a pretty rare exception. Making decisions and knowing which decisions to make and and the challenges of, um, of um, what the major issues are, that's, um, I can do all that. It's, uh, um, and when you get in positions like this, um, it's about filtering the BS. And I've got to know enough about my boss to know what he considers important and what he considers less important. And it's my job to get him the right information at the right time. The mayor is the figurehead. Uh, council is the uh, is the budget. The mayor can't spend a dime without Cleveland City Council's approval. The mayor can't start an initiative or change a, change public policy without council's blessing. Our government is set up in a way where there is a inherent uh, uh, checks and balance, and so there's no council that will subject itself to a mayor, and there's no mayor that will subject itself to a council. While the mayor and I talk regularly, it's very rare that it's specific to an ordinance, a piece of legislation, or a public policy decision that, that he would like to see. Um, it's more with the cabinet, uh, and, and his cabinet would come here and sit on this side of the table and present to council an initiative or an idea or a funding request. Uh, and then uh, we on council would consider it, debate it, um, deliberate over it, and then pass it. The cabinet is basically all the directors of the city departments and the cabinet meets in this room every Wednesday morning and Mayor Jackson runs the meeting, he sits right there, I sit here, and we go through the various departments and the directors report on what's happening. The cabinet members are directors of departments or chiefs of clusters that have multiple departments under them. All of them have wheels which means I don't have to, I can hire them, I can fire them, I don't have to have any reason for doing either one of those. And so um, their responsibility is to deliver the service of their department and to oversee the divisions under the department. Example, we have a, a director of public safety. My responsibilities as a director of public safety is I oversee the police department, the fire department, emergency medical services, the house of corrections, the dog kennels, and safety IT. And it's my responsibility to, to deliver that service. Uh, public works, uh, they have under them waste collection. We have the streets department, we have recreation, we have motor vehicle maintenance. The Department of Aging works to help older persons in Cleveland, okay, remain as independent as possible. I have parking facilities. I have property management. So as Chief of Sustainability, I report to Mayor Jackson and um, I have a few primary roles. Um, my goals are to save the city money, reduce our environmental footprint, and increase the health and well-being of Cleveland residents, visitors, and people who work here. Well, I have cemeteries, I have park maintenance, I have uh, playgrounds, pools, all those responsibilities. We have about 1,100 employees in the Department of Public Works. We have a $175 million budget, and that's not enough money. We need more. The mayor has the responsibility of proposing a budget, 
and by law that budget has to be balanced and the council's obligation is to pass a balanced budget by April 1st of every year. As a councilman, I am an elected legislator, so I, uh, my primary black and white responsibilities, if, you had to, if I had to write it down, it would be to pass laws and to uh, manage the budget of the city of Cleveland. We make laws. And so, and we vote on laws and we vote on uh, projects for the city. So we keep the city as a whole also in mind when we're making our votes. And how do we balance what's going on in the city and, and what's going on in our ward and what makes sense and what is fair and equitable. We're elected. We're not appointed to be there for life. We're not dictators. So, so we don't maintain the position. We are, we're holders of the position. And we're there for as long as the people and the voters want us to be there. A council person can hold office for as many times as he can get elected. There are no re restraints on it. As of last year, I'm the longest serving chairman of a council committee in the history of the United States. Council is the voice of their constituency. Uh, that's why I don't believe in a smaller council. The more distant you are from government, the less government will respond to your needs. They call my office, they call me at home. Whenever I'm available, I answer the phone. And so my struggle is always to try to find a resolution for the problem that my constituent has. With that comes some added responsibilities to uh, make sure the trash is picked up, to scoop up dead animals, to paint over graffiti, to work closely with the p police department, um, schools. Taxes are for the purpose of supporting the delivery of service. Income tax is the main uh, tax for uh, city municipal services. Uh, we get some portion of the property tax and we get fees and, and other things like from admission tax or from parking meters, all that is designed to provide service. Now, education, education is paid by property tax. So my role in the mayor's cabinet is different than everybody else in his cabinet. So I don't actually attend the mayor's full cabinet meetings. Uh, he has them and all of his other leaders do. But I have kind of a dual report role. I report to Mayor Jackson and I report to the nine member board that, that he appointed. So my bosses technically are that board. I do meet with Mayor Jackson every Monday afternoon uh, with his chief of education and with my board president and vice president, so that's our interaction. Um, it's different than every other school district in Ohio. We're the only district that uh, actually has a mayor engaged and, and leading our schools. Our education system is going through a reform. Uh, the school that you're in right now is part of that reform. Is is a new school established as part of our uh, attempt to have better education in our schools and have education that is relevant to today and that will give young people opportunities to have choices and careers. My daily work is to make sure we continue to improve our academics um, and to make sure that we balance the books carefully so that we don't find ourselves back in the position of having to cut um, millions of dollars, lay off teachers, shorten school days, all the things that hurt our academics. Disparity between one area and another area, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of factors to come into play. A lot of that is around education. What we attempt to do is try to create equity by having education at a high standard regardless of where you live so that every child has the opportunity to be educated. That will go a long way in terms of expectation of not only of that child and their family, but of their community and what that community will expect of government. Because we really need good young people in this town taking leadership roles and I would love to lose my seat to one of you uh, who cares deeply about the city of Cleveland. The failure of a school system will greatly impact the success of Cleveland. I go into all our schools. The pride factor is missing. So we need to be proud of where we are. We need to be proud of where we came from. And we most importantly need to be proud of where we're going. And I think you guys doing this project and, and just your professionalism and your um, commitment to it uh, speaks volumes. I'm spending time with you. 
And to me, for today, that's a great story.